Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. For this month's Birds Notes program, we're going to take a little trip down south. Joining us from the Audubon Center in Huntington is bird expert and conservation biologist Mark Labar. Thanks for being with us, Mark. Always great to be here, Fran. So it seems that you took a little time off and headed down south. I did. I did. I, you know, so to speak, needed to kind of get out of Dodge. And I took a trip down to see my daughter in Florida. Of course, Great. with COVID and everything, I had to convert my car so I could sleep in it and tented out and followed all the precautions needed, came back quarantined after I got back. So it was quite the process, but um, it was a fun trip all, you know, all around and I got to see some good birds. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds like a perfect opportunity to do some birding. I think Florida is just amazing when it comes to birding. I think that's where I got turned on to it. So tell yeah, us what you saw. So I had hoped when I went down that I would maybe catch the beginning of the, uh, the migration north. Mm. Um, but I didn't quite do that. But at the same time, uh, yeah, I've got uh, a chance to see a bunch of different stuff. And, you know, what's funny is you head down south and you hit a group of birds that, you know, we see off and on here in Vermont. They pop up, but they're omnipresent down there. This mm. first one, the Carolina Wren. Um, you know, everywhere I went, once I got to South Carolina and further south, this bird was singing. Uh, it's loud. It's a bird that, you know, we we are just starting to see here over the past decade here in Vermont, it's becoming a regular, but down there it's all over the place. And then of course, you know, we've talked about Cardinals here and people get excited about Cardinals, but Cardinals are all over. Mm -hmm. They're another species that you hear and see and, uh, you know, they're, they're just around. It's kind of the common background noise with, um, with those Carolina wrens. And then, you know, one more is uh, the mockingbird, the northern mockingbird. Um, you know, this is a mimid and uh, it sings all sorts of different songs, but, you know, you're in kind of uh, state parks and residential areas and these three birds seem to be everywhere. Right, they're, they're all the way down in Florida and all the way up here. So are, are they migrating at all those birds or are they just everywhere? Probably not. They're probably just regular residents there. Um, they're just there in larger numbers than we see them up here. And who knows, as time passes with, um, you know, the changes we're seeing with climate, they may be regulars up here too. Hmm. Um, you know, with that mockingbird, which is, again, I said a mimid, so lots of different songs. I had one morning in South Carolina where I had a mimid uh, trifecta. And uh, in kind of the same bush, I saw a, a mockingbird, a brown thrasher, mm. um, which is another um, bird here that we see less and less in Vermont. This is a species that really likes Vermont shrubs and isn't as common as it used to be. Um, and then right next to it was a gray catbird. Ah. Um, one of my favorite birds. Um, you know, you can see that red undertail. I'm waiting for um, the catbird to get back and start singing in the lilac bushes next to my house. He wakes me up every morning. So um, this one was maybe a resident, but also maybe um, one of the early migrants that was pushing north. And then, you know, when we talk about smaller birds, another bird that was really common that, you know, I seem to hear it everywhere from the Okefenokee Swamp uh, in and around, um, you know, some of the towns is the Northern Perula. Mm. Uh, and this is just a small little bird, but it's an it's got an awesome song and it's got some great coloration to it. Um, you know, so pretty. So, so, is he up here? Yeah. The, the Perulas aren't up here, are they? Yeah, we do Sometimes see we them, see them actually. Um, we have them, we'll see them here at the Audubon every, every once in a while. So uh, it's a species that winters down there and, and they'll move north and join us here in Vermont. Hmm. And why are there fewer thrashers? Do you have any idea why 
Well, it's, so you know, it's one of the things that we work on here at Audubon uh, as um, Vermont becomes more forested and development starts spreading. We're losing a lot of the shrubby habitat, uh, that old mm. field habitat structure that thrashers like. And so um, I personally don't see them as much as I used to. So we're working to maintain uh, mm. a lot of that, you know, here in the Champlain Valley. Awesome. So let's go back down uh, south to some of those uh, long-legged birds that are so elegant. I, I love these. Yeah, you know, we're lucky up here in Vermont to see a great egret. We're seeing mm. more of those. But down there, you get things like the roseate spoonbill, mm. you know, which is um, just a bird that stands out because of its colors and, you know, the, the bill that it gets its name after, which it uses for, you know, feeding and everything like that. So, you know, they're just sitting out there um, waiting for you to look at them with your <laughs> binoculars. And then birding with my daughter, although we probably did more talking than birding, I came across uh, one of the state parks east of St. Pete, uh, a little pocket of wood storks, mm. which we don't see up here. And it's a, a bird that nests in, you know, some of the deeper mangrove swamps, um, forested swamps of down south, um, a little less uh, fancy than the roseate spoonbill, but nonetheless a great bird. And, and then last, I, we camped at a campsite um, west of St. Petersburg, and I went birding in the morning on some agricultural fields, and there were sandhill cranes that mm. were hanging out there. Uh, now, this is a species that makes uh, amazing flights uh, up through the interior of the U.S. And surprisingly, we, you know, we see them sometimes here in Vermont. So where would you see them in, in Vermont? They are stunning. So we tend to see them in the Champlain Valley. And um, usually they're where the spots where they nest. It, it, it's, you know, up in the northern Champlain Valley and a couple of other spots. Um, but sometimes I'll get pictures of birdies that will see them, you know, out in the middle of fields and they'll see them hmm. with their fledglings. So that, that's a kind of, we're kind of on the outskirts of the range. So uh, a bird that might be showing up here in Vermont relatively soon. Right, uh, so interesting. And uh, so you saw these, which was this, was this inland mainly? And, and then did you, or, or was this out of, on, the, on the shore, on the coast? No, mostly it was um, some of the state parks and the hiking trails that we took, my daughter and I, inland, um, uh, you know, uh, Florida. Uh, but then I was fortunate on my way back um, um, to make it out to the coast. So what did you see there? So uh, the fellow uh, that I have been going out to the Bahamas to do piping clover work for uh, a number of years um, lives in North Carolina. And he took me out to an island called Hutuff Island. Hmm. And we came across a bunch of these shorebirds. Dunlin is what they're called. Mm -hmm. And, and it, this is a little deceiving because this is how I saw them. When they get breeding plumage, they have a black belly, which it really distinguishes them. Hmm. But they have that little droopy tip at the end of their bill. Um, so we found a bunch of these. Uh, you know, uh, this island's going to be protected primarily because uh, it's a place where birds stop, but also breeding pairs. Hmm. Like, um, you know, these American oyster catchers. You know, uh, a pretty big bird and pretty dramatic with that really orange bill. You know, they'll nest on the islands. And while I was there, we were just beginning to see the first returning least terns. Um, hmm. These are a small little tern that, that does nest all the way up into Maine. Um, so they were flying around and they were having a good time. And then right at the end of my trip, um, as I was heading out, I didn't make it to the Bahamas this year, but I did see three piping plovers that were hanging out on the beach there on Hutoff Island. And so that was kind of topped off my entire birding trip down south. <laughs> I love the way they, they run on the, on the shore. Those, yep. um, the, the plovers, there are a couple of birds that, that do that, but I could just sit there for hours and, and watch them 
running um, up and down the surf. Yeah, and you know, this island was a substantial, it, it's a pretty big island and um, you know, pe they've managed to um, allow human folks, you know, to use it, go out hmm. there and use it for swimming and, you know, beach time but also protect the birds. Audubon, New Hampshire, um, which uh, is kind of Vermont's counterpart, has done a great job at, at finding that in between that uh, keeps the bird protected without necessarily uh, keeping humans off. Right, so that's on the Gulf Coast and just, just off of St. Pete uh, around there? No, Is that's there actually off the coast of North Carolina. Oh, okay, so this is on your way back. This was on my way back. And of course, as I traveled further north, some of the, you know, I kind of uh, beat the birds back. You know, they weren't moving as fast as I was. And uh, I was excited to get back to Vermont and see some hills. Um, and now I'm, you know, just kind of waiting here and waiting for the, all those birds to catch up. Right. So what what is a bird that you wish that you had seen migrating at this at this time that you might have missed? You know, probably I would have loved the group of birds. I think I would have loved to have seen were some of the warblers, ah, you know, sure. um, some of those birds and neotropical migrants that are coming across from South America or Central America, you know, leaping oh. across the Gulf and, and hitting the southern coast of Florida. Um, I was Got a little it. bit early for that big push. They're probably moving through now. Oh. And um, hopefully in the next couple, two, three weeks, we'll see them here. All right. Well, sounds like a great trip. And of course, it's always great to have you on the show, Mark. If you have a bird related question, you can pass it along to Mark at the address on your screen. Or you can drop Mark an email. His address is mlabar at audubon.org. Send Mark your questions and pictures, and he'll try to find the answers for you on an upcoming edition of Bird Notes. Thank you so much, Mark. See you always, next always, time. Always fun, Fran. Uh, we'll keep chatting. Okay. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. Uh -huh.